Good morning, everyone. Today is Saturday, October 29th. And so that means that Halloween is only two more days. Um, I know some people already had a little Halloween celebration at their school. Rosie did, right? I don't know if June did. I wonder if June's is going to be Monday, maybe. No? She doesn't go to school on Monday. Okay, we're going to have to ask June if she had any Halloween celebration at her school this week. So, um, I'm going to read a little book about a little witch today. And this one is called Witchling's Wish. So, let's, let's hear about Witchling. All right. Witchling's Wish by Lou Frazier and Sarah Massini. Above the misty mountains, below a glowing moon, lived a lonely little witchling with a wobbly knobbly broom and a squeaky leaky cauldron and a not so pointy hat and a spell book full of magic in a cave of inky bats. Now, the little witchling didn't mind the beetles in her bed, and she didn't mind the drip, drip, drip of water on her head. But deep inside her witchling heart, there was an empty space. I wish I had a friend, she sighed, to fill this lonely place. I can't grow one. I can't sew one. Hmm. The witchling scratched her head. I know she cried. I'll cast a spell and magic one instead. So she opened up her spell book and she checked her shopping list for all the things she'd need to weave a friendship making wish. A cup or two of cobwebs, some earwax from a lizard, a pirate's boot, a blue owl's hoot, and snowflakes from a blizzard. At last, the little witchling hummed, my spell is almost there. All that's missing is some furriness from one-eyed teddy bear. A bear, the little witchling frowned. I bet it's huge and hairy with spiky claws and gnashing jaws. It sounds extremely scary. But if I want my wish to work, I'll have to face this all. And there's a bear in acorn drive, so says my crystal ball. <coughs> Excuse me. So off she whooshed into the night aboard her wobbly broom and when the house loomed into sight. She peered into a room, but the curtains twitched, her broomstick pitched. She tumbled through the air and landed on a little girl and a one-eyed teddy bear. Imagine how surprised that little girl was. <coughs> Excuse me again. I'm Lily, said the little girl. It's very nice to meet you. Stand back, the witchling cried in fear, before that fierce bear eats you. My bear, said Lily firmly, is not the eating kind. He may look a little scraggly, but that's not a thing I mind. And though I've hugged off all his fur and one ear hangs in tatters, Ted's been my friend forever, and to me that's all that matters. You've hugged off all his furriness? The little witchling cried. My wishing spell will not go well without Ted's fur, she sighed. You see, I'd hope to magic up a friend, the witchling said, and her not-so-pointy witchling hat drooped sadly on her head.
Well, said Lily thoughtfully, there is just one last hair, and if you really need it, then Ted and I will share. You'd give, the witchling said amazed, your Ted's last hair to me? Well, I think your heart is bigger than I thought a heart could be. But she saw how Lily loved her bear, and then the witchling knew that taking Ted's last lonely hair, she simply couldn't do. And sighing just a little, the witchling turned away, but Lily and her much-loved bear jumped up and called out, Stay! Don't you see, laughed Lily, that's what a friend would do. You thought of me, you thought of Ted, you didn't think of you. Then Lily hugged the witchling and they both hugged dear old Ted. Your witchling heart is big enough for all of us, she said. And that was how, through kindness, the witchling made a friend. And though her spell was never cast, cast her wish worked in... the end. Her wish worked in the end. She found a friend. I really like this book a lot. That was so kind. Look at that sweet little bat. I love the illustrations. What did you guys think? 